Pastor Julie Jenkins with Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles, a ministry without walls or boundaries, a threefold ministry, number one, helping people receive salvation, two, helping people receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction, and three, to receive healing in their spirit, mind, soul, and body. And this is the word for the week. And the word for this weekend is standing on the promises of God. Did you know God has provided you precious promises in his holy word? Did you know that he wants to take care of you and guide you every day of your life? He wants to provide for you. He wants to protect you. And he wants to always be there for you in all circumstances and send you his peace. In a world that is becoming more secular in its outlook because of the world system and the globalism where we're all dependent upon one another through the economy, we see that they are trying to create also a one world religion. Many would call our faith into doubt because of the Bible's exclusive claims of, that Jesus makes, who says in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16 explains the dynamics of the spiritual wisdom granted to us who have believed in Jesus and have received the Holy Spirit as a free gift that Jesus gives us when we call on his name and surrender to him. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16 says about this wisdom from God. However, it says, we speak wisdom from among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. I want to stop there and say, Beloved, we have these precious promises. We have this precious promise that we can't even fathom through God's Holy Spirit within us. Verse 10, 1 Corinthians 2.10 goes on to say, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. And God will be very deep with you. Verse 11, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man that which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know the things that have freely been given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Some translations, spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that, may he, that he may instruct them? But we have the mind of Christ. You see, with the Holy Spirit within us, we have access to the mind of Christ. To instruct us on a daily basis. We also have access through the Holy Spirit to spiritual things and concepts and wisdom and great things from God himself. Many precious promises are revealed through the Holy Spirit to us as we go to him in our daily devotion, as we worship in church, and as we pray with other believers. And we can rely on those precious promises. In 2 Corinthians 1.20 it says, 
Paul the Apostle says, For all the promises of God are in him that's in Jesus are yes and in him amen to the glory of God through us. So all the promises of God are yes and amen. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus explains the amazing, eternal, and abundant life we have. First, he says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief Jesus was talking about was the enemy, which is Satan and demons. But he says, in continuing in verse John 10.10, 10, uh, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So God wants us to give that us that abundant, fulfilling life through him. And God describes himself throughout his holy word called the Bible in Isaiah 44, 24. He explains himself. He says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. Isaiah 45, 5, God makes it very clear. I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. So we, so we see that God is one God, but three persons in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage you in Isaiah 43, 10 through 11, where God says to us, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I am chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. So God is urging us to look to him alone and not to look to idols, which are lifeless things. But the reason why people worship idols, and an idol can be anything from from a created idol to actually a physical thing that we put our trust in is because sometimes there's a demonic influence behind them that wants you to worship the demon instead of God who's the creator of all things. So he says, besides me, there is no savior. And God's promise to us in Isaiah 54, 10 is this, for the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you, and my covenant peace will not be shaken, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. So God has great compassion on us. He, he has loving kindness for us and a covenant of peace that he won't break. We have a loving kindness and gifts of God through his spirit and are in that covenant relationship with God. And he continues to show us his will and his way and how you can stand on his promises through his word. Second Peter 1, 3 through 4 explains about God and his precious promises. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I don't know about you, but when I read that we may be partakers of the divine nature, I was astounded because that means that we have access. And as God says in his word, we're being conformed to Christ. We're becoming more like him. We're becoming the very thing that God wanted us to be. And God gives us this promise of eternal life as explained in 1 John 2.24. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. That eternal life that we experience is God himself and then the infinity and the eternal nature of all that. When we received Jesus into hearts, we were born from above and we received infinite and eternal promises from God that continue into eternity. See John, the first chapter, 10 through 14. It says, 
about Jesus. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received them, to him he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see there that we were born of God. We're born of God, so we have God's divine DNA, the Holy Spirit in us that supersedes the natural uh, earthly DNA that we were born with from a baby on. And in John 3, 3, Jesus explained to Nicodemus, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again that's from above, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus further explained this new life that has been born in us in John 3, 5 through 7. He said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel when I said you must be born again. So this is God's command that we be born again, that we receive his Holy Spirit and to be saved. And as I look at the title, Standing on the Promises of God of this message, it brings to mind a beautiful hymn by Russell Kelso Carter, who was a professor in the Pennsylvania Military College of Chester. While there, he was licensed to preach by the Methodist Episcopal Church, and he became very active, leading camp meetings and revivals. After failing health forced him to abandon this work, he studied and became a medical doctor as well as a writer. He wrote novels as well as hymns. And this is the hymn that we have uh, all heard of, uh, Standing on the Promises of God. And if you haven't heard of it, we pray that you would somehow look it up on YouTube and listen to it. And this is the hymn that has deep theology that says so very much about God's promises. The first verse says, Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through the eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, that's the word of God, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. And then the refrain is standing on the promises of God my Savior. I'm standing on the promises of God. Hebrews 4 says to make sure you enter the Sabbath rest of God, that you stand on these promises. That means that God is going to be handling all your affairs in life, all your problems, all your needs, and that he will carry you all the days of your life. Now let us go to the Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear God, I thank you for your divine, eternal, and magnificent promises of your eternal, pure word that you've given us, who have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit that you sent inside of us to lead us and guide us into all truth and to the deep things of God. Lord, we seek that relationship with you and to grow deeper in you, and we thank you for the healing that you bring. Help us through the Holy Spirit to examine all the promises of God's word daily, to fellowship with others at a church, and also to reach out to our neighbors and help them in their walk with the Lord. Thank you for being our Redeemer, Savior, and soon coming King, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that we have these precious promises in you. Amen. Now, if you would like to contact us, you can call us at 
1-800-285-5577 or you can email us at revjerry at addictionfreeinchrist.com or you can write us at Addiction Free in Christ, 639 York Street, Suite 208, Quincy, Illinois, 62301. Well, thank you so much for watching this program. God bless you. And Jerry and I will be back with the message next week. Please give us a call if you have a prayer need. And we thank you. God bless you for watching. Bye-bye.